In the 1990s, this six feet two inches tall ex-football player was the boogeyman of hip hop. They was not scared of Suge Knight. They was terrified of Suge Knight. Knight. Right. I mean, terrified. I know. No, to death. To death. Mm. Wow. Suge Knight was the big cigar smoking label owner that had everyone terrified. Well, maybe not everyone. One of the rappers who really didn't give a F about Suge was Easy E. Back in the early 90s, Dr. Dre wanted to leave NWA. However, unlike Ice Cube, who seemed to get out of Ruthless Records easily, Easy E wasn't going to let Dre out of his contract. So, Dre decided to bring in some muscle in the form of Suge Knight. Suge tried to destroy my record company with the help of others, Dre. According to BG Knockout, Dr. Dre set up a meeting with Easy E, but when Easy showed up to the hotel, Dre was nowhere in sight. Instead, he met Suge Knight. Talk Suge, moderate. they tried to bully him. He told us the story. He said that Dre called him, you know, to meet with him to, to sign over, you know, sign him, get him out the contracts or release him or whatever. But when he get there, Suge was there. Suge had some of his homies hiding in the closet and onto the bed. After Easy e entered the room, Suge locked the door and his dudes came out from where they were hiding. So they was in a hotel room. Suge had dudes hiding in the closet under the bed. And when he get up there, when they, he get up there, Suge locked the door. Suge's goons came out from the closet and onto the bed with guns. And when he get up there, when they, he get up there, Suge locked the door. All these cats come from under the bed and out the closet in the bathroom with guns. However, contrary to the news that was flying around, Easy e was not touched or beaten by Suge or any of the dudes with him. You've got to understand that Easy isn't a man anyone could just mess with. Keefe D stated that Suge knew Easy e had the entire Compton Crips with him, so they were definitely not going to touch him. But ultimately, some situations happen, and he gets a release for Dr. Dre and Michelle A. See, that, I, I watched that movie and stuff like that. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's that shit true because uh, Easy e had the whole Alondra behind him. And Alondra a little bit was harder than Lil Rosegrand back then. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he had the Atlantic Drives, the Kelly Park, and Hoods, Southside, Spook Town, just name it. Okay. Uh, Occasion, the whole sh Alondra was buying them. So we ain't gonna put a let no red rag too easy like that. You know what I'm saying? So that was kind of, I think that was a uh, fucked up shit. Towards yeah, him. I heard Easy never got beat up. No. Now, back to the hotel room. So even though Easy had several guns pointed at him, he maintained his cool. He did sign the papers that Shook gave to him, but according to BG Knockout, Easy E put his fake signature on the document. Yeah, so when they did it, I guess Easy uh Easy was smart, so he didn't put his real signature on the paperwork, and that's so, why so, so he they never basically, held so, out. So you're saying that they pulled guns out on him? Yeah, absolutely. And basically said, "Sign this." Right. Did Did Easy get beat up like the movie nah, show? Nah, hell no. Nah. No, they didn't touch him. They didn't touch him. Nah. And this wouldn't be the only time that Easy E outsmarted Suge Knight. Easy then filed a lawsuit stating that he signed the papers under duress and the contract was rendered invalid. It was an invalid Absolutely. kind of thing. And he ended up getting 20% of everything that they put out okay. for the next six years and they couldn't do nothing about it. Anything Dre produced or made over there, yeah, he got paid for it. When he eventually signed the next papers that actually released Dr. Dre from Ruthless Records, Easy signed a contract that made sure he got 20% of the profits from any record Dre produced or rapped on for the next six years. Absolute kind of thing. And he ended up getting 20% of everything that they put out okay. for the next six years, and they couldn't do nothing about it. Anything Dre produced or made over there, yeah, he got paid for it. This is why Easy e himself stated that Dre Day is actually Easy es payday. Now, how did that work out? Basically, I had Dre uh, signed as exclusive producer and exclusive artist. Mm -hmm. So when Dre tried to make his deal all over at Interscope, you know, I was included for the next six years. So you can say all you want to say. Basically, you could diss me all you want, but I'm going to get paid. Because that's why I say Dre Day is only Easy's payday. Suge not only helped Dr. Dre leave Ruthless Records, he also signed Dre to Death Row Records. However, this partnership wouldn't last for too long. Dre left Death Row in 1996 and created Aftermath Records, and the label became very successful after Dre signed Eminem. Shortly after, Aftermath and Death Row had different changes of fortune. Unfortunately, Pac was killed, and the Death Row label became a shadow of his former self. Suge was also sentenced to nine years in prison in February 1997. During this period, 
Snoop Dogg also wanted to leave Death Row. Snoop and Suge's relationship had gotten so bad that Snoop had to hire security because Suge allegedly wanted to kill him. The duo even dissed each other from time to time. Suge Knight recently said he used to be a superstar and now he's just a no-limit soldier. What do you say to that? Nothing. He used to be a CEO, now he's just an inmate. Luckily for Snoop, another label wanted to sign him. This was when Snoop Dogg did business with Master P. Master P wanted to sign Snoop to No Limit Records, but we all know negotiating with Suge was never going to be easy. Because as Snoop himself says, Suge was the boogeyman everyone was scared of. Master P but, went but to go that, visit Suge Knight in the up. penitentiary right. and struck a deal because everybody else was scared of that nigga. Right. Right. Everybody, that's when Suge Knight was the monster, the right, boogeyman. Right, right, right. That's when he was the boogeyman. So, Master P went to Mule Creek State Prison to negotiate with Suge Knight, but Suge wouldn't budge easily. So, P goes to Mule Creek Prison. I met with Suge Knight and said, look, man, what you want for Snoop? I heard that you got a deal on the table. Master P had to pay millions of dollars for Suge Knight to release Snoop Dogg from his contract. I met with Suge Knight and said, look, man, what you want for Snoop? I heard that you got a deal on the table. They had a conversation. They got to understand it. Worked out some numbers. He told me what it was. And I put an extra two or three hundred thousand on it. And that was it. What was the number? It was a couple mil. However, Suge Knight and Master P's story doesn't end here. Suge Knight was granted early release from prison in August 2001, and after Suge became a free man, he reached out to Master P. But Master P showed that he is part of the group of rappers who wasn't scared of Suge. Suge Knight tried to press Master P to get him to leave LA, but he wasn't having any of it. I know, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So you got a call from Suge, did anything like transpire from that? What, what? Oh, you say, say Cal ain't big enough for me, him, and, and uh, Puff. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I say, when you moving, because I just bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from going after Snoop Dogg and threatening Master P, another person that Suge had a problem with was Dr. Dre. Remember, Dre had left Death Row and he was succeeding with Aftermath while Death Row was struggling. Seeing Dre succeed with his new label made Suge quite jealous. What makes it even worse for Suge is that during this period, Eminem had become the biggest rapper in the world. For Suge Knight, this was like the worst nightmare becoming a reality. Suge despised Eminem. What do you think of Eminem? Is that, is that, what do you think of white rap? Well, you know, I don't, I don't, it's, see, one thing about some the ghetto is, is, is colorblind on a sense. If you really from the ghetto no. and you really doing those things you rapping about and you talking about, I can respect that. Right. If somebody else writing your rhymes, uh, somebody else is you telling somebody else's story, that really don't mean nothing. Suge hated the fact that the guy who was now selling more albums than everyone else was on the label of the man he considered his enemy. And M had inherited Dr. Dre's beef by signing with Dre. M was now the prodigy of Dr. Dre. Dre left Death Row. Suge didn't like that. Dre getting back on. Got this, this white rapper that's ended up being the best rapper in the fucking world. Suge had a problem with it. He was like, you know what? That kid need to be with us over at Death Row. According to Eminem's former bodyguard, Big Nas, Suge tried to force Eminem to leave Dr. Dre and perhaps join Death Row. At the 1999 Source Awards, Suge had organized his goons to attack and beat Eminem, but Big Nas found a way to keep Eminem alive. M was walking to his seat, I'm standing off to the side, and M was cut off on his way to his seat, and all these guys in red shirts surrounded him. And I'm looking at M's face, and I'm looking at these guys, I'm like, shit, something ain't right. So I started making my way around to come up the aisle, and this thing I know, you see all these guys talking about death row, motherfucker, death row. Death row, motherfucker, death row. So by this time, I, I cut in 
I step in front of him, I push the guys back. I'm like, yo, what the fuck going on here, man? Big Nas stated that he had to use the red carpet to keep the death row dudes from hurting Eminem. So we had, I told him, I said, man, whatever you do, paparazzi is out here. Take many autographs, do many autographs you can, do all the interviews that you can. I said, because these dudes are not going to do nothing to you while you're on camera. What was Eminem saying during all this? He was like, man, I'm oh, shit. Oh, it was oh, like, this motherfucker's whoa. trying to kill us, man. They, what are they trying to do? What do they, they want? I don't understand. What do they want? However, this wouldn't be the only time that Eminem and Suge Knight would cross paths. The next time Em and Suge Knight met each other, Eminem showed that he wasn't scared of Suge. At this time, even 50 Cent was involved. Bottom line is, I'm a crook with a deal. If my record don't sell, I'm a rob and steal. You better recognize, nigga, I'm straight from the street. Eminem, 50 Cent, and other G-Unit members were in LA to shoot the video for 50's song in the club, but they weren't expecting an unexpected guest to show up. Yeah, yeah, like I, I was like, what happened? I remember the time, actually, it's funny because he showed up to the in the club video shoot. He came and it was like, Shook's outside! Shook's outside! Everybody like, Shook's outside! He was running, dropping shit, Pshum! Right, man, everybody going, Pshum! I'm in front of the camera like this. Shook's in what? Running. It was just gone. Shook Knight showed up at the set to intimidate and let everyone feel his presence, as he didn't show up alone. He arrived in typical Shook Knight fashion. Shook arrived with other blood members but not the type of gang members you would normally find him with. The death row boss came to the set with Mexican blood members. My first experience with him was um, in the club video shoot. Mm -hmm. And this is like our first times in LA. We looking at LA, we just think about the palm trees and the weed. All right, Shook Knight showed up to that video yeah, shoot. Yeah, Shook Knight showed up and he had, I, I think it was the Mexican bloods or something. They all, it was crazy. It's the first time I seen like, a motherfucker with a tattoo on his forehead. 50 stood up to Suge Knight and said to him, what's up, man? What you want to do? You know what I'm saying? And I just remember smurfing. 50, 50 was like, what's up, man? What you want to do? And bang him. Yeah, bang him was like, bang what, what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And Suge looked at him and he took a puff of cigar and he blew it out and he did like this and he left. Tony Yayo stated that Eminem was also involved and he was also ready for a fight. But this is why I always respected Eminem, 50, and niggas that was with us. <coughs> so Suge came, he had some Mexican niggas. Now we from New York. I was bugging because I seen, this is when I knew Eminem was real. He's like, I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> I swear, this is when I knew, I'm like, damn, Eminem is a real nigga. These niggas, be 50 niggas outside, what's up? And then the nigga Suge just walked away. The Mexican niggas look kind of confused, like they didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Oh, but niggas came outside. Eminem came outside, 100%. Wow. Oh, what did I miss? Okay. <laughs> and Eminem was like, yo, I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> After 50 Cent saw Suge Knight and Irv Gotti. And then with the Vibe Awards, he was with Irv. So I never forgot. It was like they was walking in slow motion. They was walking by the trailers. He asked one of his guys to go and get as many as 15 knives. And 50 being the genius he is, told James Cruz, go buy 15 knives. And he, James Cruz went, bought 15 knives, passed them on the trailer, and we was like, 15, 15 niggas with knives is like, you ever seen American Me? Oh yeah. You seen how motherfuckers get sick? Yeah. So you know 15. That was the movie that made me never want to go to prison. This was how Young Buck got the knife he used to stab the man who punched Dr. Dre at the same award show. So what do you think? Is there anyone who should be on the list that I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video, and I would like to see you at the next one. Peace.